You're watching Smart Money. It's time to address some of your financial queries now. Let's welcome our first viewer, Kavita, who is joining us from Bangalore. Kavita, pleasure talking to you. Tell us, what are you really doing with your money? What is your concern? Hi, Vivek and Monica. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk to you today. I'm a big fan of your show and I have been following this religiously and you know there are certain questions which I wanted to ask. My name is Kavita Singh and I work for a multinational company here in Bangalore and uh, one of the two key questions which I had for you you know which I needed some expert advice on was first uh, of course was the insurance plan. You have a details about my portfolio which I'd sent to you. My insurance plan, I'm looking at changing that a bit and I needed some advice on which insurance plan should I take, which will give me a good uh, risk cover. At the same time, uh, you know, it should uh, be something where uh, there's some flexibility in terms of a withdrawal amount. And also the second key question which I had in mind was how do I build a retirement corpus? I am, uh, you know, at an age where soon, you know, I'll be retiring in the next 15 years. And I want to be able to maintain a good lifestyle at the same time, not be dependent on my son uh, financially. So I just wanted to see how I'll be able to build a good retirement corpus. Thank you very much for your time again. I uh, really appreciate that. All right, Monica, you have gone through her entire portfolio. Is she on the right track? And it's good to see that she's yeah. at least, even though she's 15, 16 years away from retirement, she wants to plan for it. Yeah, there's a thought about it. And every money box has a story to tell. And Kavita, yours talks about the stress of uh, the pressure of a single income, no alimony support, and a medical event which really eroded your money box. But happy to say that you've swum in deep waters with your neck, with your head held high. And we will work on four parts of your portfolio to put it all in place for your goals. What do I see in the money box? It's a single high income. There is a dependent son who will start earning in the next five years. You have your own house. There is some provident fund, little bit of PPF. Rest of the money box is practically empty, right? But we've still got a lot going with this box for us. The first area that we w I want you to work on is to build your emergency fund. You already have a fixed deposit, and if you switch the insurance policy that you have discussed in your mail, there is a policy that you have which is a very high cost, very low return policy, and you have the right thought of surrendering it, and the amount that you will get back, you club your fixed deposit and that amount into one fixed deposit, call it emergency fund, that's your money for six months living costs in case an event were to happen with your job. Now let's come to your insurances. That's your big question. I'm not a big fan of using insurance bundled with investment, so I'm going to keep the two separate. My first concern is about your medical insurance policy. I don't see much. There is a cover from your office, but we need to build a cover for you and your son, which you own. In the next 30 days, Kavita, you will get a 5 lakh cover each medical insurance for you and your son. Top it up with a 15 lakh family floater cover. So individually, you will have a 20 lakh cover, and that shouldn't cost you more than 25 to 30,000 a year. So that's the first thing you do. Now, life cover. You only need a life cover because you have a dependent son, and he's not going to be dependent for more than five years. You do have certain assets. It will not need so much money. So a one crore term cover is enough for you at this stage. It will cost you about 15,000 rupees a year. The minute your son gets financially independent, you stop that insurance. You don't need a life cover at all. Now, third, we'll come to your investments. The first thing I want you to do is to hike your monthly surplus to 50,000. There is a strong income flow. There are strong surpluses. And I feel there's a little bit of a cash flow problem where you seem not to know how much money is being spent, how much money is being saved for smaller goals. So do one thing. This is my favorite advice to most people with a cash flow problem. Create three accounts. There's a salary account into which all income comes. You push part of it into your monthly living costs. I call it the spend it account. That's all the money that you will spend in the month. And there is a save it or invest it account. All the rest of the money sits in that account. So you've kind of demarcated what you're going to spend and what you're going to save and invest out of, right? Now in this, I want you to target 50,000 a month. The good thing is that a lot of your big goals are over. The house is fully paid for. You will have certain shorter term needs, like you said, Diwali shopping, travel, all of that. 
Those are your short to medium term needs. You don't use equity linked products for that. Stay with products you understand like a fixed deposit. It is terrible in terms of tax. It's terrible in terms of inflation. But the money is safe and you understand it. Till the point that you are able to understand products like debt funds better, stay safe, stay with your fixed deposit. Right? So you're putting away not more than 20% of your total investment money into short and medium term goals. A big chunk, 80% of your savings, you're salting away for your retirement. What products will you use? Your core of your portfolio remains your provident fund. You've had to use it for a good reason earlier. Let's keep this provident fund money going safely for the rest of the 15 years of your career. Your PPF account is still fairly empty, credited with one lakh every year. And there's still amount left for your long-term investing. Kavita, I would encourage you to understand mutual fund products because that is one way of targeting inflation-adjusted return with lesser risk uh, uh, facing products than you would if you were to buy direct stocks. Right? So the products that I would recommend for you will be two balanced funds and two large cap funds because at your age and your understanding of funds, I don't want you to, to take too much res risk. Do look at the Mint 50 list and choose products out of that and begin to read up a little bit about mutual funds so that you know what you're getting into. Now, the fourth area is to create a will. It's not, you know, there's no need to panic, but because there's been a, a situation of separation in the family, you must be sure that the assets that you've, you've created go to your son. So do create a simple will and, you know, make sure that your son knows where that is. You, what you need to remember now is the next 15 years are your highest income years with a lot of your goals already in place. So this is the time that you will salt away strongly for your retirement. And given the flows that, of income that you have, I think yours, you don't need to worry about maintaining your lifestyle and the kind of life that you've been used to, Kavita. So good luck with all your planning. I'll be happy to hear from you again. Absolutely. We will be happy, Kavita, <clears throat> if you call us again and let us know how you've moved in terms of managing your money. Let's move on to our next viewer, Gaurav Kumar. He's joining us also from Bangalore. Hi, Gaurav. Yeah. Hi, Vivek. Hi. Good talking to you. Tell us, what is bothering you about your money? What would you like to know? Uh, hey, hi, Vivek and Monica. Uh, first of all, I'd like to appreciate uh, it's, uh, it's a show on Indian television which is much needed due to the current times. Uh, so going to the uh, my particular question, essentially, uh, I have uh, I am not able to figure out where to invest in terms for a long term, with, given the volatility of, of uh, stock market or mutual funds. Uh, so my main problem is how to uh, build a corpus that will last me uh, post retirement and uh, fulfill my uh, you know basic needs and duties. All right, Gaurav. Monica, he is doing well for himself yes. and uh, he has a fairly decent amount of income flow coming. But again, pretty much Kavita's question as well and he's already thinking retirement. That's right. It's a good sign that That's people right. are getting more aware of it. That's right. And also I'm kind of uh, amazed at the kind of money people are able to save. I think this whole mm. inherent savings habit that Indians have reflects so well in portfolios. Right. So it's not as if they're compromising on their lifestyles, mm. but there is a lot of savings which happens. So that's good to hear, Gaurav. What do I see in your money box? I see two incomes coming in, one child already and one possibly being planned. Parents have shared responsibility between you and your brother. There's a strong surplus of income uh, savings that I see every month. There are very, uh, well, strong real estate assets that you've already created. One house will get fully paid for next year and another one in the next 20 years. And of course then, like most portfolios, few financial assets, but a view that you do want to build them. Now, we'll, your concerns, of course, are around kids' education, marriage, and your retirement. I'll come to them in a minute. Your first uh, goal, of course, is to create your emergency fund. Because there are two incomes, I will recommend that you put away three months of living costs into something that you label in your head, emergency fund. It could be a fixed deposit. It could also be a short-term debt fund because you have invested in debt funds and have withdrawn in the last few months because you felt they weren't doing too well. But maybe you could revisit why the funds did what they did and what products you had. Right? Debt funds, remember, are not for targeting very high return. It's for 
shorter term needs where you're trying to do a little better than a fixed deposit in terms of return and tax, tax uh, incidence. Now, insurances. I'm going to come to your life cover first. You have three policies, and I don't like any of them because they're giving you not enough cover. They're not giving you enough returns in terms of investments either. There's one which is coming up for maturity next year, so don't touch that. You'll get the money back. The other two, I do want you to surrender. It's not worth your while to continue to fund something which is not good, either insurance or investment. What you do for life cover, you buy yourself a two crore term insurance policy. Your wife needs a 70 lakh term insurance policy. Combined premium of the two will not be more than 40,000 rupees a year. So that's something you've got your life insurance out of the way. Mediclaim, now both you and your wife have benefits from your company. So there's, I don't see too much need right now. So do buy a 5 lakh family floater for you, your wife and your child. But do remember in your mid to late 40s to revisit this medical insurance because as you grow older, you may need to build in stronger uh, self-owned medical covers than today. So there's no point for 10, 15 years you know, pushing money to a, to a cover that you don't need, but you take your family floater as your own policy and then in 10 to 15 years prob probably build uh, your own cover more strongly. Now the real part of the discussion, your investments. The first thing, stop buying more real estate. It's a great product to have, but too much of it will weigh your portfolio down because every asset class will have cycles. People look at real estate and say, oh, you know what, it did so well. But most people sit on real estate assets for 20 years and then they get a multiplier. I would say the same thing for uh, equity linked product like a mutual fund. Good funds held over long term have given 20 to 22 percent year on year for the last 10 to 15 years. So the trick here, just like in properties, if it's location in property, it is choosing the right fund in mutual funds. So let's see what we will do. Now, I want to alert you to something next year when your first EMI, your first home loan gets done. There is an opportunity here because your surplus will suddenly more than double next year. And what you do with that extra money will determine how you meet your future goals of your children's future and your own retirement. Now, you do have short, medium-term needs and longer-term retirement and children's education and marriage needs. I would say 30% of your surplus you're using for your short and medium-term needs. The products that you use are a mix of fixed deposits, FMPs, short-term debt funds, and low equity exposure balanced funds. These are balanced funds which don't put more than 20% uh, of the money in towards stocks, towards equity. The bulk is in safer debt, right? So that's your products for your uh, short and medium-term needs. Your longer-term products, the core of your portfolio is your provident fund, that of your wife, the one lakh each that you will put into PPF products, the rest of the money you will use to buy equity funds. What are you buying with your profile and your experience with mutual funds? Large cap funds is a good idea, two of them, and small and medium cap funds to give you a returns kicker. Stock, uh, fund selection is key. If you can't do it yourself, look at the mint 50 list, choose from out of that. Remember to review your portfolio periodically because again, you know there is no fund which may stay on top year after year but you may need to revisit the selection that you have done because Mint 50 also twice a year will rework the portfolio that we have, right? Now, your money box has the potential to become seriously heavy in the next 10 to 15 years. There is a little bit of work that you need to do to understand mutual funds better. And once you do that, I think there is, uh, the, the goals that you have set out for yourself will be more than met. All right, Gaurav, thanks for calling in and let us know as you go along in life how your money has really worked for you. All right, with that, it's time to say goodbye for now. Always remember, wealth cannot be earned, it can only be created. We at Smart Money will continue to help you to grow and protect your money. We'll be back same time next week with many more strategies for your finances. From Monica, me and the entire team, thanks for watching. To get our expert opinion on your finances, you can send us your queries at smartmoney at btvin.com. You can also call us on 022 4098 7098.
You can also SMS us. Just type SM, give a space, write your query and send it to 977-327-0010.